thank you for joining us. Namaste. So today I was playing with um, a little bit of downward dogs and little variations and ways to play with downward dog in terms of, you know, adding movement through the legs and the pelvis. So we'll just see how we go today. It's just a little bit of a, a, a theme about it. And so in order to get there, we'll have to certainly warm up the shoulders and the back in order to support a little bit of play through downward dog. So let's begin. So it's probably a good idea. I, I have some blocks too. Um, you know, you don't have to have them in the practice, but they can often be very useful in, in practicing downward dog and, and give you more space in the uh, more lift through the arms so that it might feel more spacious through the leg. So but let's start with with lying on the back a little bit and put the, um, the, the feet parallel and you can walk them close to the uh, buttocks and we're just going to do some rolling up the spine and exhale down, kind of, you know, uh, it's a bit of bridge pose, but we're not trying to go into the fullest of the bridge pose. We're just trying to warm up the back. So I've got my inhale, pressing through the feet, rolling up, my exhale, You know, it's interesting to try the opposite breath approach. So you can exhale, rolling up, and inhale, rolling down. So it is really useful to connect the breath, but to also challenge the different ways that you might use the breath in posture. So we're just trying to get the connections and the heel bones into the sit bones. A little bit of flow in the spine and a little bit of flow in the arms. So we'll just do a couple of more. And you can, of course, play with where you put the inhale and where you put the exhale. Because sometimes we get into these habits and realize it feels strange to do it any other way and it's often good for the body to be challenged because it helps us have flexible pathways in the body mind and then we'll do one more and you can hold it for a few breaths just feeling that connection with lifting the pelvis forward and then slowly come down. And then we'll do some abdominal um, waking up. So you can either place the hands next to you, palms down, if that feels like the right thing. Or you can interlock the, finger, the fingers and fold the hands under the head. And for some reason, I really like this position because I can take the thumbs and give my neck a little pull. But I can also lift my head in my hands if I've got a little bit of tension in the neck. into a variation. So inhale the knees in. Extend one leg down, one leg up. And of course you can vary the range if you only want to go that range. That's fine. Or you can try a bit of 90 degrees. Letting the lower heel be just hovering off the Make sure 
the heat up, breath, moving. And again, you can inhale when you bring the knees in, and then exhale when you extend the legs. Or you can exhale when you bend the knees, and inhale when you extend the legs. So again, it's another way to vary the breath, vary which way you do the inhale. Try to keep this up so if you have paid attention to which leg you started with, uh, you can do two more. And bring the knees in, place the feet on the floor, and just do a little windshield wiper, which is a nice way to just start to get a bit of twist in the body, but also releasing any tension that might have built up into those five sockets. And then on one of those windshield wipers, you can really just drop the knees and let yourself roll over and come up to all fours. So it's good to, you know, before going into downward dog and playing around with downward dog, it's good to just put ourselves in that tabletop or all four position and just see how the head and neck are here, how's the support from the hands to the shoulder. Now to support to the feet and the shin. And then we'll go ahead and round the spine. I don't get seasick, so maybe there's something in my inner ear that's okay doing that, but a lot of people have problems that way, so you always need to modify if you have anything with the inner ears or the head and neck. So walk the hands forward and then tuck the toes under and go into a downward facing dog. And if you have the two blocks of and you can see what that gives to you. And you know, you can always, I mean, people probably don't have big textbooks or dictionaries anymore, but you could always use solid books like that for blocks too, if you don't have those in your possession. And then inhale, go into big toes together, and we'll make sure that as we do these 
little variations in play with downward dog that we do a lot of big toes together knees wide and of course you can do it anytime if you're feeling too much tension building up in the shoulders because downward dog is really a pose that once you can come out of those shoulders you can find a real restfulness because the head is lower than the heart so again walk the hands forward tuck other and come into a downward face again. And then if you're able, you're just going to rock a little forward and bring one knee in, just feeling the work in the abs, but also you really have to you get some arm work here, then extending that back. Inhale the other leg forward and then extend it back. And you can either stay in downward dog a couple of breaths or come into big toes together, knees wide if you need to. But if you're able to stay in downward dog, you can do that. And then for the next movement, we're going to again come forward. This time we're going to cross the knee towards the opposite elbow. And then extend that back. Then we're going to bring the other knee and bring it towards the opposite elbow. And then bring it back. And then either couple breaths and down with dog or big toes together, knees wide. And then the next one is inhale and bring the knee up to the outer arm. So it's the same knee going to the outer arm. Bring it back. And then the other knee going to the outer arm back and then we'll all go down into big toes together knees wide <laughs> couple of breaths here you can probably feel how this is really starting to warm up the body and then inhale coming up and you know you can take your time when you come up you can really feel that initiation either pushing from the from the lower spine or really letting that head pull you forward and then cut the toes under go and down with facing dog now i'm playing with leg positions today so take one leg just bring it a little bit out to the side. Try not to uh, change your balance too much. And bring it back in. And then take the other leg out to the side. And then bring it back. And then bring the foot up even higher. And put it on the floor. And then you just come into like a plank pose, but you might feel how you're getting a bit of stretch into the legs. And then bring it back into a downward dog. And then the other side, bring the leg out. You're sort of in a plank with the leg to the side, on the heel. And it might not come very far forward. It might still be like right back here. Because we're all going to be different. And then bring it back. And then go into big toes together. Knees wide. And then for a little bit of a break, come up and just place the backs of the palms on the hands on the floor, place your knees in your hands, 
and you can just do a little massage in the hands and a little stretch in the wrist and this you can manage where it works for you you know you can put more weight you can lean more forward you can tuck the toes under you know whatever <clears throat> way it feels good but we you know by doing lots of downward dogs we might come into a little bit of um, strain in the, the wrists as well so we want to have little little breaks in. and then release the hands come back into big toes together and really wide to bring one foot just at the low part of the thigh here. Yeah, we'll break it down. So we're just going to stay here for a few breaths. You can flex the foot. And then bring that foot back down the dog. And then you can take the other foot. It's like right above the kneecap here. And you know, your your leg might be there, or it might be more open. It just depends on your hips here. And then bring that foot back. And you can either stay in downward dog for a couple of breaths, or go into big toes together, knee to line. We're going to go back to the first side with the ankle down by the thigh and then see if you can slowly come into a plank pose and keeping those hips as level as you can and then coming back and then to release the leg see if you can bring it into three-legged and then for the second side, bring that ankle down near the lower part of the front thigh. And then slowly come into plank pose. And come back into downward dog. And then lift that leg up to three-legged and then bring the knees down and go into big toes together and knees wide. And actually while we're here, we'll have a nice another little halftime break. Walk your hands over on one of your thighs here. And then really press those hands and then try to bring your ears parallel with the arms. So it's just a little bit of a side stretch, side hang. Walk the hands back into forward position. And then walk them to the other side and then press the hands down, get some length in the spine. You can look up if that helps, and then bring those ears parallel to the arms. And then walk the hands back to the center. A couple of breaths here. Up. We're going to try to add some of these together <laughs> and tuck the toes under and take one heel across like we did and then inhale come forward plank and exhale come up bring the 
leg into three legged dog and then bend it through like you just did and see if you can find that space between your hands. And that's what's useful to have blocks because that often gives you space to move that. So now we're just in a lunge. Place the hands down and we'll bring that leg up to three legged dog and down. And then take the other leg and first bend it across the leg. Come into plank. Come back up, find your way into three legged dog. Swing the the leg between the hands, and you've got a bit of a lunge. Hands down, leg up, now face the dog. And if you need a break, go and big toes together. we're going to go into a different pose. So we're going to swing the right leg to three-legged. Now bring it forward into, you know, a pigeon variation. So you might only get here. This is also where blocks can come in handy because it just gives you more way to press up and lift the chest up. Now, if you don't have blocks, don't worry about it. Keep your hands here. The other thing you can do, you see my toes are tucked under, you can start to walk the toes back and place the top of the foot on the floor if you can do that. If not, just stay wherever you are in this pose. Might be an intense outer thigh stretch. I'm going to tuck those toes under, bring my hands forward so I can swing that leg back up, back into that old dog, then swing the other leg, bring it through, and again the first stage would be here, or like I said, if you have blocks, bring them here, you can stay there, you can put the knee on the or if you need to, or you can start to walk the foot back, place the top of the foot and shin on the floor, stretch through this outer thigh, outer buttocks, outer hips. Tuck that toe 
under, so you can bring that leg into a down dog, and then into big toes together. Inhale, come up, and we'll do one more of what we just did, because I always think it's a shame to do just one of those because I think in the second time around you find it more manageable. So tuck the toes under, downward facing, swing the leg up, bring it through, and wherever you are in this pose, be in this pose whichever way works for you. Leg, so you can swing the leg up, bring it down, swing the leg up, bring it through. Wherever you were on the other side, come in the same way to the current side. And of course, one side might be tighter than the other. We're never fully symmetrical. serves your body best. So whatever pose you're in. Just begin to notice your breath. Letting yourself soften to the mat, into whatever pose you have chosen for Shavasana. stretched, a little stretched out. And see if you can feel the breath really move into those thigh sockets. Softening that connectivity into the pelvis. Collarbone, 
show that the way armpit is out through the arm. And you let all that space
thank you for watching and joining us. Namaste.